So, um, I, I am, I am ha Hanumat Preshok Swami. Yeah, I have to remind myself. Okay. 
and uh, we were asked to make some presentation. We're, we're staying in Radakon. We got some nice little place to stay there until January. But we were asked to make a presentation, and I thought it would be two or two or three people presenting. So I would be presenting for you know 30 minutes. 45 minutes, but it ended up being an hour and a half. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. You know? <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah. Vrindavan Dham Ki Dai. Yeah. Um, so, I guess maybe one can start talking about Srila Prabhupada and our experiences with him and glor glorification, illumination, right? Illumination, yeah, yeah. We're not trying to do vil vilification, <laughs> vilification, but glorification, yeah. which is basically illumination, you know, illuminating Srila Prabhupada's uh, transcendental qualities. Yeah. So we, uh, I was initiated in 1974 uh, from a letter from Srila Prabhupada when he was in Bombay. And in the same letter where he gave us first initiation, he gave uh, Vaisheshika, who was in San Francisco, also second initiation. <laughs> so he's like my big brother. <laughs> he's carrying on with him. Yeah. And then uh, we, we were in San Francisco Temple, 450, 455 Valencia Street. But then the, the devotees bought uh, a big piece of property in Berkeley, California which is right across the bay, you know, from San Francisco. It's, of course, one of the most famous universities in the world. And we thought it would be a very nice place to stay. So actually, it was six city lots, pretty big, you know. And it had been a Mormon temple before that. And so they were just moving in. It was Rathi Yatra, all these things happening. And, and Srila Prabhupada came. And that was 1975. 1975, he came for the Ratha Yatra. And I, I'd just been initiated for, you know, one year, and everything was, you know, very strange. And, you know, not, not many people knew what was happening at that time. I mean, you talk to Hridai and Nandamars and everybody else, and they, they really hadn't figured out themselves, you know, what was happening and all these things, you know. Srila Prabhupada was, you know, yeah. There's one, uh, one devotee I know, Bhaktivatsal Das, and he's a big manager in the healthcare industry. And I've seen him, he's very good dealing with, dealing with crisis situations and management, all these kind of things. So our little temple in San Francisco in Santa, San Jose, Silicon Valley was kind of disorganized. And he said, okay, I'll, I'll take charge of it, I'll manage it. You know? So after two months, he told me, he said, managing in the non-profit sector is completely different than managing in the profit for profit sector, you know. And he said, then when you go to the religious sector, it's even, even, you know, more strange, you know. He, he said, managing in ISKCON is like herding cats. Herding cats. You have a cow herd boy, you have a cat herd boy, like that. You know? So you're trying to herd the cats, and the cats are sitting there, you know. <laughs> like that. Yeah. He said, it's just, devotees, it's a whole different motivation. But if you, he says, if you understand it properly and can motivate devotees, devotees from a spiritual platform, he said, they do things that you cannot pay people to do. Doesn't matter how much money you pay, people won't do it. But devotees will do it with enthusiasm. Okay, yeah. So anyway, in 1974, I was initiated, 75 Prabhupada came there. And first time in the temple. And I remember, um, uh, Suk Sukadev was calling, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're broadcasting this. <laughs> So, uh, uh, Prabhupada came, yeah, okay. And, you know, he was giving very, very nice lectures. Um, actually, I was the treasurer, the treasurer, trying to handle all that situation. And I remember I'd, I'd gone to the bank, which was, you know, maybe two, block, two blocks away. 
And then I came back and all the last of the devotees were running in the temple because Prabhupada had come from the airport from Los Angeles. And you know, he went into the temple room and as usual Prabhupada went to the Vyasa San and gave his arrival address. And that, so I came in and saw him. Then after that, of course, he gave morning classes for several days you know, there. And, and I always remember you know, one thing that he said, it's like Prabhupada qu quotes certain things that he heard, which were, you know, really principal, how the disciples should make the instructions of the spiritual master his life and soul. So I think he, that was from a purport, no? To uh, one Bhagavad Gita verse by Vishnu Chakravarti. He took that, you know? So anyway, I remember this always. And uh, I heard this from my spiritual master's lips. <laughs> Because Prabhupada says we should work, we should act as we hear from the lips of our spiritual master. This is a big problem for, for Ritvik philosophy. <laughs> Ritvik philosophy. So I heard this from Srila Prabhupada's lips, and now <laughs> you can hear it from my lips. <clears throat> but you've got to figure out who I am, okay? Prabhupada said, anybody who chants Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadhar, Srivas, Adi Gauravakta Vrinda. And follows it with Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Has achieved the perfection of life. Yeah. But, if you want to preach, you should probably read my books. <laughs> yeah. So very, very nice, concise statements, summary of our philosophy, our culture, everything else. <clears throat> so our movement is basically based upon, you know, sankirtan, you know, chanting, hearing the holy names. And myself, I come from an academic background. So, of course, I got so much involved with the Bhakti Vedanta Institute, Bhakti Sarup Dhammadar Maharaj, and the academic program, programs. And the, 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 pro, pro, the problem is, you know, that you start to become attached to jnana, and I know so much, and, and things like this, you know. And it's not really, the, the jnana is not really the process in this current age. Deity worship is not the process, you know. And so the process is, Haranama. Nama. Nama. Eva Gaiva. Kanama. Steva. 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 Gatir Anyata. This is a participatory class. <laughs> yeah. So this is the this is it. This is a chant the names of God, chant the names of God, chant the names of God. There is no other way. There is no other way. There is no other way. Is there some other way? No, I say there's no other way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so hearing and chanting, you know, Hari, Hari Nam Sankirtan, you know, is, is the basis, right? The basis of our whole process. But Prabhupada says, but if you want to preach, you should probably read my books, you know. So how many people here want to preach? Raise your hand. Yeah? Okay, most people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we should probably read Srila Prabhupada's books, you know. So I was thinking some topics, you know, we can maybe discuss. I, I can talk about my own personal experiences, you know, with Prabhupada and relationship with him throughout the years and now. But one of the main things, again, has been this thing, you know, because I heard Prabhupada say that. Okay, so that's the thing, chanting everything else and getting, getting 16 nice rounds done. I don't know, maybe some time ago, a few years ago, somebody asked me, they said, well, what, what, after all your experience, what is the essence of all this Krishna consciousness? And I was just thinking about it, and what it comes down to to me is, get up early and get your rounds done. <laughs> up early and get <laughs> Seven words. <clears throat> so many things happen. But again and again, if you just get, get up early and get your rounds done, whew, you know, then everything else, it just, it just falls in line like that, falls in line, you know. So that's it. Chant Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, 
Yeah? Well, how do we do it? Then Prabhupada gives us a systematic way to do it, process to do it. Kirtaniya, Sadahari, always chant, always chant, always chant. That's the basic principle. But, you know, to, to systematize it because we're not always doing it, then he gives us a standard of 16 enthusiastic rounds. You've got to read the fine print. It's not just 16 rounds, it's 16 enthusiastic rounds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And following four principles strictly, you know, yeah. So we're chanting systematically on our beads. And then Prabhupada also recommending, you know, get up early by four o'clock. He's actually, he says, he says in Upadesha Amrita, we, in this movement, we require everybody to rise up by four o'clock in the morning, perform kirtan, attend more morning program, read Srimad Bhagavatam, etc. So the etc. is there, Tulsi Puja, Guru Puja, so many things. But the basic thing is Mangalartik and Kirtan and Shema Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. And then and etc. Then yeah, he also recommended, of course, full evening program. Um, one time I was in a class and Nabiyogendra Maharaj was talking about some of his experiences with Prabhupada. And he said he had come from a little place in, in Kashmir. He, Maharaj is from Kashmir, no, yeah. The devotees who maybe were passing through and traveling Sankirtan and kidnapped him or something, you know. <coughs> so he came to Krishna Balaram temple and he was engaged as a brahmachari. He took first initiation, second initiation. And then he said during the, the morning program, you know, one day uh, one devotee came to him, he was chanting with other devotees in the temple here. He says, Navi Yogendra, Prabhupada wants to talk to you right now. He says, oh, 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 yeah. So he went to Prabhupada's room. He said, Navi Yogendra, I have a temple in uh, Ethiopia or someplace yeah, in Africa, maybe it was South Africa, you know, uh, that, that's having problems. I want to send you to become temple president, you know. And he, he was shocked. Yeah. He, he, he said, so Prabhupada, I, I just come from a little, little village or town in, in you know, was it Kashmir and coming here to, you know, Delhi and Krishna Balaram temple. It's all a big, you know, big change for me. And now you want me to become a temple president, you know? And not only a temple president, but a temple president and a temple, temple in another, another continent. And not only a temple in a temple, another continent, but a temple is having problems. You know, it's, like, it's impossible, can't do it, I can't do this. You know? And he said, Prabhupada looked at him and kind of smiled, you know, and said, if you, if you chant 16 nice rounds a day, follow the four principles strictly, and keep a full morning and evening program, and see that everybody under your authority does the same things, you will have no problems. You know? So Prabhupada says this many times, right? You hear so many things so many times, but at certain points you're ready for them, no? And it's like, you know, they, they, they penetrate your intelligence, your heart. So I, I did it. And so I tried to apply it. And one of the things I realized, if there's no opportunity to preach, it's a problem. <laughs> so, you know, so, but I noticed I did that. Everything else, I had no problems. You know, and I had opp opportunity to preach. So we're developing, you know, systematic, right? Systematic method of, of chanting, you know, applying this principle. Yeah. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Hare Krishna Hare Rama. Yeah. Yeah. And if we want to preach, right, then we should probably read Srila Prabhupada's books. Is it necessary? Can you, can you preach without reading Prabhupada's books? They say no, but Prabhupada says probably. <laughs> Bhagavad Gita 10a. What, what, are, what are the four nutshell verses of Bhagavad Gita? What verse numbers? There's four verses that are considered by Jiva Goswami or somebody to be sent Bhakti Vinod Thakur, the four essential verses. What are the verse numbers? 10.8, 10 10.8, 9, 10, <laughs> You can't count. 10.8, 10, 9, 10, 10, 10, 11. And now I'm going to make you remember the verse numbers. You'll never be able to forget it. So if you want to forget it, you have to cover your ears now. Okay. 10, 10.8 is? 108. 108. 108. Okay, so there it is. 
If you memorize those four verses, you'll always be able to, you know, quote from Shastra to support anything. And people will never notice that you only know four verses. They'll never notice that. Oh, she's always quoting from Shastra. <laughs> but you have to learn them well. Very nice verses, you know. So, tesham eva no kampartha mahama jnana jam tamaha nasyam yama bhavasto jnana dipena bhavasta I dwelling in their hearts and enlighten them with a shining lamp of knowledge and destroy So the two purports there, Prabhupada gives very, very nice purports. And he's quoting from uh, Rupa Shiksha, instructions to Rupa Goswami, Rupa Goswami. Where, where did Rupa Goswami hear those instructions? In Sao Paulo? No. Yeah. Tokyo? Delhi? Yeah, Prayag, Allahabad, Dasha Shwameda Ghat. Yeah, yeah. For 10 days to 10, yeah, Dasha Shwameda Ghat. Yeah, yeah. So, so you see that Prabhupada quotes those so many times. It's, we did a separate seminar on those, you know, on Rupa Shiksha. It was so popular, so nice, and this lasting benefit. So Prabhupada's quoting in the purports there to those nutshell verses. And he's quoting where, 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 where um, Lord Chaitanya is saying, and Prabhupada says, even if one has a bona fide spiritual master, belongs to an authentic spiritual movement, but somehow or other cannot take advantage of either one, if he surrendered to Krishna, chant Hare Krishna, still he, he, there'll be no lack of enlightenment and knowledge like that. So yes, yeah, somehow or other we can't take advantage of these things, still Krishna will enlighten us, enlighten us. Of course, normally the first result of chanting Hare Krishna, the first education we get is, you should get up in the morning. <laughs> yeah. you, you should go to class, you know. Why don't you read some books? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, the first instruction we'll get from chanting is to, you know, engage in the process, you know, properly. Many people may have had that experience even. You're chanting and then you're praying very sincerely and you realize, well, I got to start, you know, Adoshada, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya. I got to start finding out if there's a systematic process. Yeah, there is. Bhajana Kriya, there's a systematic process. You get a systematic result. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, pro probably we should read Prabhupada's books, but, but many people are very different. You know, uh, the temple in San Francisco, Berkeley, there was one guy, Bhakta John, maybe like about. 23 years old, real big farm guy from California, California. And in Central California, there's a lot of agricultural area. You know, very nice. So he, he joined the temple. He was a bak bakta, very simple, big guy. You know. And his father and uncles and stuff had a lot of farm property, you know, in, uh, where is it, in Central California. And they had hundreds of acres there and, you know, growing so much. So anyway, he said that he was a very simple person, very direct, you know, farmer, you know. So he said, um, you know, right around Christmas time when everything was calm and schools were closed and whatever, he was out with one of his friends, uh, you know, driving around in the pickup truck, just checking all the pumps, pumps for the agricultural stuff. And it was Christmas, so in California it was very cold and very clear. So he said he got out of the pickup truck and checked something and his friend was sitting inside listening to the radio. He looked up in the sky and all of a sudden in the sky appeared all these people, you know. And one of them said, John, I'm Krishna. You should find out more about me. <laughs> so, and then disappeared, you know. So he said he kind of like looked around, <laughs> you know. Look, look at his friend, and his friend was just listening to the radio. Eh, different. <laughs> so, so next, it was in Modesto, California. So the next day, um, he went to the local library, which is a really small place. You know, it's a really rural, rural place. You know, one librarian, librarian there. And he asked her, he said, do you have any books about Krishna? <laughs> <laughs> so she said, let, let me look and see. <laughs> and so, so she had the, uh, the first volume of the Krishna book, the big one, 
came out originally like that with Krishna on the cover. She said, well, I got this book. And he, she, he looked at the picture and he said, yeah, yeah, that's him. <laughs> that's him. <laughs> so, I mean, there's no way on earth he could have invented this. He was such a simple, very nice, lucid guy, you know. So, you know, if, if, if we're sincere, and especially if we're chanting, which is the Yuga Dharma, which shows so much sincerity, then Krishna will enlighten us. Yeah? And again, he'll, he'll, tell, he'll take you to a book, okay? Yeah, he'll take you to the deities, he'll take you to the temple, he'll take you to, to Eska, yeah, like that, so on. But in any, any case, the, the enlightenment's there, the information's there, the energy's there, like that. Without the purification and motivation, motiv motivation, that comes from chanting, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, we won't be able to understand the books. Yeah, yeah. The books give ideas, they give perspective, they give information from so many angles, so many angles like that. But the actual laboratory practice is chanting, and chanting, and especially, promise that one devotee actually was Jaya Way tomorrow, right? good friend. He's, he's always preaching about how you shouldn't be adding, you know, Nittai Gora, Tulsi Devi, Hari Bol, Hari Bol. You shouldn't be inventing all this stuff. You should use the same tune every day, you say, like that. Very, you know, following Prabhupada's example, a very simple kirtans and so on, you know. So I looked up the uh, Vedabase.io, I think about R Radhe or something, and it came back with Prabhupada walking in Vrindavan. And actually, Jaya Waitamaras was asking, Prabhupada, they're chanting Radhe, Radhe, and Nittai Gaur, Hari Bol, you know, in, the, in the, the kirtans. And so at that time, to him, Prabhupada said, it is all right, it is all right, no harm. He said, but Maha Mantra is Maha Mantra, you know, and as much as possible, chant Maha Mantra, you know. So, chanting Maha Mantra, result, and we'll get enlightened. We'll be able to understand the books, we'll be able to see the deities, yeah, all these processes are there. Yeah. So any, any comments or questions at this point? I can go on. How much have we gotten here? Okay. My God, we survived for 27 minutes. <laughs> okay. 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 So no, another thing, actually, there were, what is it? There were three things. I remember especially three things when Prabhupada came there. And again, it doesn't take a lot. I mean, you have so many experiences. If you haven't got a lot, you don't need a lot of, you know, mantras and central ideas in your life, you know? <clears throat> so, Prabhupada said this, that the Panchatapa mantra and the Hare Krishna mantra, in so many places he says that, other places also, other places also he says that. These, you can base everything on these two mantras, he said. Build your whole culture. Yeah. But also, uh, one re reporter, asked him during the, I think when he first went to a press conference, maybe after a day or two, and big reporters there, and one of them said, Swamiji, what one, I can hear some of my lips. <laughs> Swamiji, what will happen to your movement when you die? And Prabhupada very firmly said, I will never die. I will live forever in my books. So there it is. It's a simple answer. Is Prabhupada Ritvik? Is Prabhupada this? Is Prabhupada... No, he's, he's there. Yeah. One kind of illustration of that, I heard a story, and it was maybe about, maybe 10 years ago, maybe like 2012 or something, <clears throat> maybe more. Bhakti Bringa Maharaj, Ayodhya, Ayodhya Pati, Mara Prabhu. Uh, he said he had gone to Delhi some, some time ago, and, you know, to get his visa renewed or something like that. And first off, it was in the beginning days. It wasn't been quite some time ago. Maybe, you know, but maybe 1985 or something, you know. So anyway, uh, he'd gone to, let's say 87. He'd gone to Delhi to get his visa renewed. And first off, he had to find a place where, you know, where the complex was for this. 
Then he had to find the building. <laughs> then he had to find the office. And he went in, there's people working there and their papers stacked up for the time of the British Raja, they're stacked up on the wall and stuff. And you know, the same rats are taking tea with the people that took it with, you know, Indira Gandhi or somebody, Rajiv Gandhi. So anyway, he finally found this desk where he had to go. And this boy is working furiously, stamping stuff, doing everything else. And he's standing there and he looks up and he goes, oh, what, what do you want? And he said, oh, I, I need to renew my visa. And he said, well, okay, sit down, sit down. You know? And he asked him different questions. Said, do you have a bank account? How long have you been here? And so many things like that. Okay, you need to get this P form filled out and the a AFS form filled out and the 122 PQ form filled out. <laughs> and you go here, do that. And after they do that, you go get this sign and come back to them again. <laughs> and he saw this is gonna, you know, take days, you know, if I'm lucky to get it all done. <clears throat> and this boy could see, Indian, Indian guy, he said, okay, he said, okay, look, I'll help you, I'll help you, I'll help you. So he locked his desk up and, you know, told other people in the room. And he said he took Maharaj around and took him up these back stairs, that, you know, he had to, <laughs> with stairs missing and everything else. Made people stop their work. And he said, oh, basically it was about like an hour and a half and everything was finished, you know, all the paperwork, you know. And they came back to this boy's desk and he was finishing everything off and he said, you know, he said, you know, the, the reason I'm helping you is because I can see that you're, you're a member of ISKCON, you're one of A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami's, you know, devotees. And I wanted to tell you that one year ago I was so confused and who am I, what is life, what am I supposed to be doing? Then, then I got Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita and he pulled the drawer, drawer open and he had Bhagavad Gita as it is. And he said, so I've been reading it for one year and everything has become so clear. I'm so happy in my life and things are becoming very clear now. So how could I not help one of his you know, people if I did, got that from him? And again, this was maybe like 10 years ago or something, you know. He said, do you think if I wrote to Srila Prabhupada, he would, an he would answer? <laughs> do you think if I wrote to Srila Prabhupada, he would answer me? And he had to tell him, Prabhupada left, left his body in 1977. Yeah. And it's like somebody coming in right now and whispering in your ear, I'm, I'm sorry, but your father died in an auto accident. Even if I just say that to you, your father, you know, it's just, even just thinking about it, this, the, the boy had a completely like hysterical reaction. He just started like, like crying and everything else, you know, and everybody else is wondering what happened, you know, like that, you know calm down. So yeah, it's a fact. You know, Prabhupada hasn't died. He's there in his books. His, his physical body, you can be within 10 feet of his physical body here. <laughs> you can be, yeah, so what are, what, are, what are all the problems? What are all the questions? What are, yeah, Prabhupada is here, you know, very, very specifically, you know. So, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Hare Krishna, Hare Ram. <laughs> yeah, Prabhupada's books, you know, yeah. What else are we going on here? Uh, in the Krishna book, <laughs> how many people here have read the Krishna book? Raise your hand. How many people here have read the Krishna book twice? Raise two, two hands. How many people here have read the Krishna book more than two times? Shake your head. <laughs> <laughs> no, Indians now, they're like that. <laughs> I, I, have, I have a very, very, I came to India the first time, 19, 78 was the first Tirubhava festival. Pra Prabhupada's, Prabhupada's Samadhi at that time was a phone booth. <laughs> it, was this, it was like this wide, you know, this is the size of a phone booth. We all stood outside and the Pujari opened up the door and there was a picture of Prabhupada and we had Arctic outside, you know. That was the, the first Samadhi festival. Yeah, it was very nice. Yeah, yeah. So, Krishna book. Yeah, yeah. So when you ask the first book I got, another story there, I'm reading it. <clears throat> yeah. Um, what are you talking about here? Never. So you're talking about. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. See, I'm, my, my body is 70. I forget how old I am. I'm born at 48. That means I'm 74. <laughs> 70 something. So Prabhupada is basically saying at, at 50 years old, you're, you're 30 years old, your physical energy is finished. You can run and scream until you're 30. And at 30 years old, okay, it starts to 
physical energy, okay? He says the mental energy is finished at 50 years old. Maybe you can push it to 55. So then you have to start working with your intelligence, you know, rather than your mind. You give your intelligence and stuff, yeah? So anyway, my short-term memory is going, yeah? Teeth are going, too, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 So, uh, there's a nice story of the gopis. The gopis attracted by the flute of Krishna. Gopis attracted by the flute of Krishna. And the, the gopis are all very, very good citizens you know, of Nanda Maharaja's village. You know, they're all, you know, they, they, they milk cows, you know. They argue, argue over the price of yogurt with people. I mean, you don't want to, don't want to engage in a business, business negotiation with the gopis. They're, <laughs> they're, even, you know, they're, they're tough. And they, play their, they pay their taxes. You know, they do everything. They're very, very good citizens. So I was thinking about this. This is, this is, this is what it means like to, to be an ISKCON, to participate in ISKCON. What is ISKCON? <clears throat> Well, one level, it's an institution. Okay, it's an institution. It has, a, has an institutional governing body. You know, the, it was a, the ultimate administrative agency for the entire International Society for Krishna Consciousness shall be the governing body commission. Prabhupada's final will and testament. Yeah, but that's the administrative aspect. You know, the, the closest friend of the GBC chairman may be some pot washer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, how's your job? It's hell, you know. Okay, how's your job? It's also hell, okay. No. But, it's, but it's service, yeah, okay. No. Okay, so the gopis, they, they're milking away and doing their jobs and very upright girls and, you know, very chaste, you know, <laughs> all this kind of stuff. But then they hear, You got it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what do they do then? Do you, you've read the Christian book more than three times. Do you, what, do, what do they do when they hear the sound of the flute? Huh? Ready? They start to talk with their confidential friends. They look around and, you know, start talking. The gopis start talking with you know, Sri Dham, Subal, where's Krishna? Where's he, where's he coming from? It sounds like he's so-and-so there. Is that where they went today? Where they were going to go? So this is ISKCON. We all belong to the institution, right? My ISKCON, right or wrong? <laughs> well, not right or wrong, <laughs> right? And if it's wrong, then we have a responsibility to do something about it. It's an institution. Don't expect it to be perfect. That's not what an institution's designed for. As far as I understand, in Kali Yuga, any institution which is 80% correct, do not try to improve it. <laughs> That's all you can hope. If, if GBC body, temple president, commander, we're recording all this, you know, is right four out of five times, don't try <laughs> and improve the situation. That's all you can hope for in Kali Yuga. Yeah. This is Kali Yuga. Yeah. Okay, this is the third thing I heard from, I remember hearing from Prabhupada. Yeah. Oh, in my lips again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Swamiji, are there problems in your temples? And Prabhupada said, this is the material world. There are problems everywhere. Yeah, yeah. When Krishna was personally present in Vrindavan, there were demons in Vrindavan that were so terrifying that the girls were having miscarriages and losing their babies from the sound of these of this things. So, oh, well, tis, Krishna is not a good administrator. <laughs> I'm leaving Vrindavan. No, you know, no, even Krishna in Vrindavan, terrible things happening. Okay, you know, so yeah, at an institutional level, yeah, this is expected, but, Within the institutional thing, we have our friends, yeah? The, the GBC may go crazy, they've done that. <laughs> they, they themselves admit it. The, the temple president may go crazy, you know. Yeah, 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 your your, your Maji Mahadakari Diksha Guru may fall down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, we're, we're friends, you know, we're, we're staying here together and we're working on this. It doesn't matter. I've been through this sometimes, I've been through. 
you know, the temple in Berkeley, San Francisco, big place was under the, was being attacked by, you know, devotees who wanted to take it out of ISKCON, everything else. The GBC executive committee gave up, our GBC gave up. And I just started calling up some devotees and friends and we got together and we told our GBC secretary, we're behind you if you want to do something. And said, okay. <laughs> and they stopped the whole thing. Okay, so first thing is you, you belong to the institution and you do your job. If there are problems, you try and correct them, you know? You follow the authorities, yeah? Second level is association, right? Friends. ISKCON is a collection of friends. How many people here have friends in ISKCON? Raise your hand. Okay, yeah. One, one girl, she was remembering her association with Prabhupada. They were just like new devotees and dancing and everything else. And, and uh, so she was new, recently married. <clears throat> and she said, Prabhupada asked her, who, who do you love more, Krishna or your husband? And she thought about it and she realized she didn't love either one. <laughs> <laughs> Both was kind of a matter of duty, duty, you know? Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, but then we have, you think about it, okay, then but sometimes we don't cultivate this, we don't take care of it. No, this is really, this is what ISKCON means. ISKCON means more than an institution, it means a bunch of people who are friends. So many of my disciples ask me, Maharaj, I've been asked to be head of the Guru Kula. I've been asked to be so many things. Should I do it, you know? So my response is always, you know, Vaishnava relations before administrative relationships, right? Vaishnava relationships before administrative relationships. Yeah, you may be temple president, you may be GBC, you may be dealing with temple president, but you know, one time I was getting critical of the management in ISKCON and, and Seisha Das was my GBC secretary at that time from the you know, Ministry of Education. And he said, Hanuman Swami, they are people. And I, <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. I forgot for a moment, they are people. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, because we get caught up in the administration and everything else and we forget that we're all people, we're all devotees, you know? And the final thing, the gopis, they're, they're doing their jobs. They exist on that level in Vrindavan. The second level <coughs> is they have their friends. And they talk about things. And friendship means different kinds of people, different subjects. It's a much more subtle thing, right? You know, dadati pratagrinati, guyam akyati prachati, bhumte. Yeah, sabiri prati lakshanam. This is describing the Upadesha Mitra. Our whole culture is really based upon how to cultivate friendship with different kinds of people, how to associate with different kinds of people, how to avoid cultivating friendship with certain people. Very subtle. It's a whole science. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, good citizens have, have their, their friends and they're, they're faithful to their friends and pe helping people through things like that. And then finally, each gopi is remembering her individual direct experience of Krishna. Right? That's the third level. Oh, Krishna composed that song for me last night on the flute. Wow, he's playing it now. Maybe he's thinking about me. <laughs> yeah. So finally, in ISKCON, we have to have our own direct experience of our relationship with Srila Prabhupada. I'll ask this question. How many people feel a direct relationship to Srila Prabhupada? If everybody else in the movement goes to hell, will you, will you stay because Srila Prabhupada is in charge? I mean, it's, I didn't have it in the beginning. But then I was living in the temple and things were chaotic. This is happening, everything else. I was working outside at master charge. And I remember the experience. I was excited. This. I was coming up a hill in San Francisco, headed to work. And suddenly my intelligence at a very deep level said, hey, okay, this temple president, this thing, everything else going on. It, you know, I'm, doesn't matter what happens, I'm gonna serve Srila Prabhupada. And that was that point. It's a certain kind of initiation. You get that relationship and stuff, you know? Yeah. In the end of the Bhagavad Gita, Sanjaya is talking about, right? His, his experiences, you know? I heard this conversation from the master of all mystic yoga, this and that, this and that, you yeah. So when purport, Prabhupada said, this is the mystery of the parampara, you know? 
even uh, what, the experience of Krishna is direct, even though it is through transparent via media. Like some people here are wearing glasses, some may be wearing contacts, right? Yeah? But you're having a direct experience of the world, even though it's through a transparent via media. So there is a test of Guru Parampara. As a test of Guru Parampara, is it giving you a direct experience of Krishna? If the Guru is contaminated, he, he, he won't be giving you his Guru. You know? Prabhupada says the Maya bodies, uh, because they are impersonalists, all they can see is the enormous feet of their Guru Maharaj. <laughs> The enormous feet of their Guru Maharaj is all they can see. But Srila Prabhupada's effort was to be completely transparent too. Prabhupada was trying to introduce us too. Wow. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. Do you think Prabhupada was surrendered to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati? Do you think Prabhupada was afraid of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati sometimes? He was. <laughs> he describes some of his, some of his scenes of like, you know. Yeah. He said one time he was, it would be in Jhansi or something, <clears throat> someplace in Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was giving a lecture. And of course he was talking like Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, so erudite. And Prabhupada was in the audience, maybe like this, and quite a few people. And he said there was one, one elderly gentleman you know, with him who he knew, who every, every month was giving regular donations and participating, and I think even initiated, but he couldn't understand what Bhakti Siddhanta was saying, you know. And so he was asking Abhai, you know, can, can you please tell me what Maharaj is saying? So Prabhupada started like explaining. Then Prabhupada said, Bhakti Siddhanta turned to him and said, you, Abhai Charan, do you think you can explain things better than your spiritual master? And you, so-and-so Baba, do you think you purchase me with your donations each month? <laughs> Prabhupada said it was like, you know, 20,000 volts of electricity passing through his body. He didn't sleep for two days after that, you know, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Another story to illustrate this, Hari Soy tells the story that he was traveling with Prabhupada and he came one time to a room, habitation for Prabhupada. And Hari Swai would put everything in where Prabhupada would use it. So his tape, his tape recorder and books and everything else. And it was a little, little bit small, so he couldn't find a place for the, for the picture of Bhakti Siddhanta that Prabhupada always had on his desk. Like we could look at him, he was thinking, where should I put this? And he said Prabhupada could appreciate his dilemma, his problem. And so he, Prabhupada said, oh, you can put, you can put Srila Prabhupada there, the picture of Srila Prabhupada there. And Hari Sori was thinking that the picture of Srila Prabhupada, you can, was the picture of Srila Prabhupada, yeah. And he said, Prabhupada could understand what his dilemma was and kind of laughed and said, you have your Srila Prabhupada, I have my Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So that's it. I mean, pra Prabhupada is trying to connect, it's like a, what's it called, it's a compound, my, compound, compound telescope. The first lens focuses on the second lens, and that's the parampara. You know, if we can see, we should be able to see Bhakti Siddhanta there. You know, the guru is revealing his guru properly to us. And Bhakti Siddhanta is focused on? And Gorky Shudas Babaji is focused on? I guess. Bhakti Vinod Thakur. <laughs> yeah. Jai Krishna Das Babaji. And I think after that is Naratam. Vishnu Das Babaji. Vishnu Das Babaji. Naratam. Krishna Das Babaji. Naratam. Vishnu Das Babaji. Naratam. Krishna Das Babaji. Naratam. Vishnu Das Babaji. Naratam. Krishna Das Babaji. Naratam. Raghunath Das Goswami. Yeah. Six Goswami. Six Goswami. Super Rupa and Sanatana. Like that. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah. Yeah. So we should experience each of these people personally. We can, we can, read, we can sing the songs of Naratam. We receive them parampara through Prabhupada. And you're singing the songs of Naratam Das Thakur. Radha Krishna Pranamur Yuga Lakishor Jivane Marane Gati 
Ara nahi mora. And you'll be there. The parampara, you'll be there with Naratam singing this. In Krishna Leela, what is Naratam? Is he a cowherd boy? Is he a flute? Is he a, a cow? He's a manjari. Little girl, eight years old, nine years old, you know. <clears throat> so here's the song. Radha Krishna Pranamor. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says, you know. You know. So a little nine-year-old girl, you know. I will, I will never deviate, deviate. So it's very intense, you know. Yeah. So this is the parampara. You know, we should be able to, as we go on, once we establish a personal relationship with Prabhupada. And it's through so many transparent by media, but they're transparent through his books, through disciples, through our service, through the deities. And yeah, then we, but we have uh, through all this transparent by media, through, through Krishna in our heart, with Prabhupada's Murti, yeah, the Vyasa son, and we, we have a direct experience of Shiva Prabhupada, yeah. And probably one of the first things of, of that direct experience is that, <laughs> I don't want to get too close. Yeah. Chanika Pandit says you should not get too close or too far away from three things. Fire, root, and king. A fire, a brahmana, or a king. It says if you get too close, you'll get burned. <laughs> you get too close to the king. <laughs> yeah. When they come to assassinate the king. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And if you get too far away, you derive no benefit. Yeah, yeah. This is it. We understand what is my, what is my direct experience of Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> yeah. So many people will tell you, you're probably hearing about, you know, their direct experiences and they, you know, they learned, you know, to keep the proper distance with guru and everything else, you know. <clears throat> Okay, so the gopis, they're good citizens, milking away, or bartering. Then they have their friends, you know, within the society, which is, otherwise it doesn't go on. You know? And finally, they each have their own personal experience of Krishna, personally. You know? Sanatana Goswami says, every cowherd boy thinks, I am the most intimate friend of Krishna. But he's thinking, but how, how can that be? So many other boys, they love Krishna more than I do. They serve him so well, they're so qualified. But Krishna's always talking to me, asking these things, you know? So, you know, every cowherd boy thinks that he's the most intimate friend of Krishna. Then Sanatana Goswami continues and says, and by the nature, nature of the internal potency, it's a fact. You got that? Yeah. Every cowherd boy thinks he's the closest friend of Krishna, and by the nature of the internal potency, it's a fact. Which is the most important temple in Iskon? <laughs> What's your temple? Yeah, yeah you feel like, my, yeah, this is my temple. It's, you see how it fits in like that, and it's essential. It's essential. Everybody's important in Krishna Leela. They take your Mercedes engine, Benz, Mercedes Benz engine apart, they fix it, they put it back together, and there's one screw missing. Uh-oh, <laughs> this is a Mercedes Benz engine. <laughs> Uh-oh, <laughs> oops. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Krishna's Leela is so intense, so accurate, so practical. Everybody is important. Everybody's created for a unique function. Nobody can do it but you, yeah? And so then, yeah, we have, we have, a per, have to have our personal relationship with Krishna, with Prabhupada, and find our position. And then we're very completely satisfied, completely satisfied in our position in the orchestra, you know? <clears throat> so those are the three things. Anybody who chants Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Nityananda Hari and follows with Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, has achieved the perfection of life. So anytime you don't know what to do, chant. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then if you, you know, if you want to preach, read my books. And Prabhupada's saying he's personally present, personally present in those books, you know, if you want to listen, yeah. And again, finally, then we're talking about application, you know. The Prabhupada's saying that, yeah, this is, the, this is Kali Yuga, you know. Don't expect perfection from the institution. Connect with Prabhupada directly through his books in so many fashions like that. And then you belong to ISKCON. That is gone, you know, which is maybe for 10,000 years or something like that, so on. So any, uh, any questions or comments at this point?
Ah, yes, please. What is your name, sir? Rajananda Das. What? Rajananda Das. Rajendra? Rajananda. Rajananda. Rajananda Das. Rajananda. Rajananda. Okay, yeah. Where are you from? France. Huh? From France. France. What part of France? Um, nearby New Bayapur now. Oh, do you like cheese and wine? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're not French. You're not French. Yes, there's a mic. I think there's a mic. Here it is. Da 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 Shaktiman, Shaktiman, dun 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 Okay. Parampara. When you say about this one, when we say things happen in the path of purification or a path of advancement. Advancement. Huh? advancement. When we leave the imperfections Imperfection. that you were mentioning of this son, is it also part of our own purification and advancement? When you say impurities in scorn or imperfections in scorn, will that mean that a path for our advancement and purification? Is it, a, is it an obstacle? Yeah. You have to ask Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> what does Srila Prabhupada say? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's a big question. There are many different aspects and so on. Uh, right now, I, I've been reading a lot, uh, Vrindavan Dham Mahimamrita by Prabodhananda Saraswati is so nice, you know. He talks all about Vrindavan. And it's very interesting, if you take his, his glorification of Vrindavan, take that out and put Iskan in instead. Iskan, he says, uh, if anybody tells me to leave Vrindavan, I will cut out his tongue. If somebody tries to take me out by force from Vrindavan, I will kill him. Even if I'm so poor that I have to, to I, I, I'm crying from hunger, then I have to steal from others to live, I will never leave Vrindavan. So chain Vrindavan for Iskon. If anybody tells me to leave Iskon, I will cut out his tongue. If anybody tries to drag me by force from Iskon, I will kill him. Even though I'm so poor, I have to steal from others, I will, I will, I, I will never leave Iskon. <laughs> so, so it depends. You know, if, you know, he says, anybody who sees faults in Vrindavan is a fool. Vrindavan is perfect in every way. Are they not the, uh, the object of everybody's laughter? I pray that I do not, do not see their faces at the time of my death. Anybody who sees problems in Iskon is a fool. Iskon is perfect in every way. But which Iskon? Which level? Yeah, the Rakeshi demon was there for a certain reason. And if we're on the, you know, Draupadi was being desnuded in public amongst the social elite of the world. The whole thing was being broadcast on CNN. <laughs> you know, it was abominable. And Bhishma Day just stayed there, like, you know, in the movie, of course, he cuts his hand like that. Yeah, because he understood there's a very deep reason for this. This is good. Yeah, because in the material world there has to be purification, there has to be these things, yeah. So, if we're, <clears throat> yeah, if, if we're properly situated with Prabhupada, and even within the administrative society, as long as Prabhupada hasn't given up on it, and I would say some things, people are using the word ISKCON in Prabhupada, that's not my ISKCON. You know, they have, whatever, you know, and I know, but, but Different times, Prabhupada, I think three times disbanded the GBC. And after he left, there was so many problems that the Brahmins just, you know, came and call, called it and they surrendered. Yeah, we were off, you know. Okay, so administratively and that level of an institution, yeah. But if we're purified and we can investigate, I did myself so many times, yeah, Prabhupada's still running the show and he's letting people do things and that's why it is. And, 
This is what I should be doing and there's no problem. I, I also, this is good for me also. It's good for me also, you know. So if we're connected to Prabhupada, then, you know, all the institutional problems will actually be, you know, sources of, sources of spiritual perfection. But if we're not on that level, <laughs> yeah, then we have to learn how to avoid the demoniac aspects in ISKCON and befriend, you know, the spiritual aspects. You can see certain people have attachments. You just don't know how to deal with it. Okay, so you just avoid it. Okay, Prabhu, Hari, Hari Bolo Prabhu. <laughs> I have to go. Yeah. It's okay? Okay. I have one question here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we've lived through, oh, okay, yes. And one purport is from Brazil. <clears throat> Maybe you know, in one purport, Prabhupada says that Ravana was keeping the gold in Brazil. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, we can take uh, two positions, or be part of the solution, or be part of the problem. It is gone. We can be part of the resolution, solution, solution. Yeah. Yeah. or yeah. part of the problem. problem. Yeah. My, my first, when I moved in the temple, my first temple president was Bhaktadas. Bhaktadas. <coughs> and uh, he said when he got initiated, your name is Bhaktadas. And Prabhupada said, that means you are the servant, you know, the servant of the devotees. He, he said, in any situation, spiritual or material, the more you think you are the servant, the more you will become happy. The more you think you are the master, the more you will go to hell. <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, more, I guess myself, my own experiences of being trained in ISKCON, being by Prabhupada and everything, yeah, it's, it, more and more it comes to my mind is, yeah, this, yeah, ultimately, we're the servant of everybody. So even the whole world goes crazy, it's just a, no problem. How can I help? What physical resources do I have? What intellectual resources do I have? My job here is to try and see what's going on and improve the situation. Yeah, yeah, and then, Yes, the whole world becomes my queen. Oh. Okay, so we're going to finish off the last 30 minutes, okay? We got like that. Ready? Hang in there. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> if you want to read, want to, what's it called? If you want to, uh, what is it? You want to preach, you should probably read my books. You know? So this, we have, we have a, a, a PowerPoint show and a presentation we made up after all these years trying to present the Bhakti Vedanta Library, right? So many books, you know, Prabhupada produced, about 100 volumes, I think, all together, you know, of, of literature that Prabhupada produced in something, what, 10 years or something, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> a, a professional author, professional author, who knows what he's doing, has a contract, everything else, it takes about two years to produce a full-size book, full-size book like that. When you look at it, it's so nice, yeah. Write, rewrite, reorganize, readjust, add, go through, yeah. Prabhupada produced, I forgot what it was, something like 100 volumes within 10 years or something, you know. I calculated it. It would take a professional author, take 35 professional authors working to, to, to produce that volume of literature. Prabhupada was not an ordinary human being. Look at him from so many dimensions, this, that, in terms of being an author. <clears throat> 35 professional authors it would take it to keep up with Prabhupada's production. Oh, well, they're so repetitive, it's the same thing. No. There's one purport in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, which I think is 17 pages long purport. 17 page long purport. And what it is, is a summary, summary study of Sanatana Goswami's refutation of Shankaracharya's commentary on the Vedanta Sutra 
where verse, one verse, where he tries to prove that the bodies of Sankarsham, Prajyamna, Aniruddha, and who else we missed there, Vasudev, are material. Yeah. So that's 17 pages. It, sh it should be printed as a separate pa pamphlet. It should be taken out. It should be put in proper position in terms of these things. <clears throat> so Prabhupada, with this incredible you know, work as an author, producing all this literature, but then it's so bewildering, you know, all these books. You know? So myself, you know, trying to take Prabhupada's books and everything else, organize them, look at them, and developing my relationship with Prabhupada. So we finally developed this whole thing of the box Vedanta library. And I remember one time we were at a home program in the United States and some new, new people were there and other people. And in the United States, many people can afford to buy all the books. You know, they, may, they may not read them, but they have them. So we started stacking them up, you know, okay. So first there's the Isopanishad, right? You know, the only thing that we have from Prabhupada that is Shruti is the Isopanishad. Everything else is Smriti. Okay. Okay. And then there's the Gita Upanishad, Bhagavad Gita by Srila Prabhupada. Yeah. <clears throat> and then that's the ABCs of the introduction to Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the heart of the Bhaktivedanta library. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you put the Bhagavatam there. Okay. <laughs> the Bhagavatam, 35 volumes, Isopanishad, Bhagavad Gita. And then Chaitanya Chaitamrita is a class yeah, on Srimad Bhagavatam. Lord Chaitanya is showing us how to appreciate Srimad Bhagavatam. 17 volumes, 35 volumes, okay. Nectar of Devotion is a summary study of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which is a summary of everything from the most simple things up to the most advanced things in one book, <laughs> okay. Thank you, Srila Prabhupada. Yeah. Then Upadesha Amrita, Nectar of Instruction, is, is a little brother. It's a summary of everything in, in 11 verses like that. So Upadesha Amrita by Rupa Goswami is a summary introduction. Uh, Bhakti Rasamita Sindhu is uh, the complete science of devotion. And Vidagda Madhava and Lalita Madhava are a demonstration. Okay. Then the Krishna book is? What is the Krishna book? Huh? Yeah. It's the tenth canto, no? Of Srimad Bhagavatam. So you can see Srimad Bhagavatam is the heart of the Bhakti Vedanta Library. Isopanisha, Bhagavad Gita, Gita is right in. Chaitanya Chaitamrita is there. And then Nectar of Devotion is a summary of all the details from the highest rasas to the simplest things. Krishna book is a tenth canto. Light of the Bhagavat is? I think chapter 30, like that. Uh, the teachings of Lord Chaitanya is an extract of the most essential parts of Chaitanya Charitamrita. In Spanish, they have the life and teachings of Lord Chaitanya, which is the introdu introduction as a separate book like that. And, so th and this one, then there's, uh, what is this? What's it? I forgot how many, 35 volumes of room conversations, four, 10 volumes of Bhagavad Gita lecture, 20 volumes of Bhagavatam lectures, like that, and so on. So this devotee had all the books, and we were stacking them there. And, putting them there like that, you know? and, and how they're all connected. They're systematically connected, you know? Then I said, <clears throat> and some people say that Srila Prabhupada didn't give you everything. So there's this new guy there, you're looking at everything, and he said, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> yeah, when you do that, it's like, well, probably your Prabhupada didn't give you everything. Well, probably somewhere within one of these things, you'll find what you're talking about. You know? And I've seen that. Oh, my Guru Maharaj, you know, it, it gives us more. You go, well, yeah, it's here in the Chaitanya Charitamrita in this purport. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the whole. So, but nectar of instruction, Prabhupada says here, constitutes. First instructions for neophyte devotees. So we carry it around our neck, you know. And it's been a focus for us. Prabhupada says you should know a little bit about everything and a lot about one thing. One thing. This is a common phrase. So we should know it. We should focus on our area, our service. We should develop it. We should become qualified in our area, become very expert, become the best, you know, in a certain way. You know? Wake up our own individual service. But we should know about everything, right? 
You know the story of the blind men and the elephant? That story? You know, it's a very famous story. You look on the internet, blind men, elephant. You'll get all kinds of nice pictures. There were how many? Five? Okay, five blind men. And the circus was coming to their village and they heard there was an elephant coming. An elephant. So they wanted to know what the elephant was. So they all went there and one guy banged into the side of the elephant and said, Oh, the elephant is a big wall. The elephant is a big wall. The other guy banged into the leg and said, No, you blind man. <laughs> the, the, the elephant is like a tree trunk. The elephant is like a tree trunk. The other guy got the, the ear. He said, Both of you are stupid. The elephant is a big leaf. The elephant is a big leaf. The other guy got the tail and decided it was a no, nose and decided it was a snake. And the other guy got the tail and decided it was a rope. <laughs> But if you go on, if you keep <laughs> following, then you begin to understand, you know. So you develop your service, but that's going to integrate you with everybody else's service. So you begin to understand everybody else, but yeah, you have your, your job to do, you yeah. know, individual job, you yeah. know. Yeah. So being sannyasi and traveling all the time and being a, you know, fundamentalist, I really got into Upadesha Amrita and developed it over many years, giving classes. And it was my way of understanding Prabhupada. I began to see there's no break in the purports or anything else. It's just like completely concentrated. You can see how each idea is flowing into the next idea. Sometimes you've got to pull back and watch. Oh, that's okay. That's what Prabhupada is talking about. Aha! And you start to see what Prabhupada's thinking. Prabhupada said, we have to do that. So you see, there's no breaks. Everything is continuous explanation of what's going on. And then the second thing, after continuous, you begin to realize that he's, he's giving citations, right? In the purports, Prabhupada's quoting from Bhakti Siddhanta, he's quoting from Chaitanya Charitamrita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Acharyas. But if you look those citations up, they're not just some citation, they are the citation that the Acharyas use to establish that point, right? So Upadesha Amrita, if you really get into it, starts to become like a, a Vaishnava verse book. People say, oh, Hanuman Swami, you have such a good, good collection of Shastric knowledge. Yeah, every single verse, practically speaking, is the one that's <laughs> Upadesha Amrita. Yeah. And they're used again and again like that. So anyway, we really began to study it for many years, and it was, it was, it was a very, very intimate way to understand Srila Prabhupada and know him. Other things too, you know. So then finally after some point, maybe like, I don't know, 20, 20 years or something, we, we thought, <clears throat> everybody else, you can do the same thing. We're thinking, okay, I want to you know, kind of put all this stuff from all these classes and everything together. So, so every day after Mongol Arctic in Houston, Texas, I would just go through it and then you know, make, record my comments. Then eventually that got transcribed, then eventually you started editing it two or three times. Then eventually uh, uh, Srinath Krishnadas and Radhika Raman became the final editors along with us. And finally our, our disciple in Peru, Abhiram Das Thakur, formatted it. And here it is! Okay, die! So, so here we have. Here's, here's the book. And here's our our commentary, illumination, trying to illuminate. Oh, hey, Vaishnava Thakur, Doyar Sagar, Hidase Koruna Kori, Diyapada Chaya Shodhaya Maya Tomara Charana Dori, Krishna Se Tomar, Dite Para Tomara Shokoti Ache, Amito Kanga, Krishna Krishna Bole, Dai Baba Pachi. <laughs> yeah. So, Tava Pache Pache means we're running behind you. We're running behind you. Tava Pache Pache, afterwards, so the next of instruction, okay. So, Dhanadar, Dhanadar Maharaj did waves of devotion for next of devotion. So we did our little, smaller, we're a smaller scholar. So we finished it off, you know, and it's very nice. It's not just me, it's so many people. And it, it, I felt satisfied. Oh, God, now I can die. <laughs> it's like that. Every, everything there is there. So we went through, uh, it goes through verse by verse with illumination. And there are many, many mistakes that people make. 
you see people have the same misunderstanding. Or there are many, in Spanish, there's two translations that are wrong in Spanish, you know, so on. And so you, you know, you point out, okay, this is, this is like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it took us, um, Dikshasti Che Pranatamis, it describes Kanista Adhikari, Majima Adhikari, Uttama Adhikari. And there was something I didn't get for years until finally, uh, yeah, that, that, yeah, that's it, yeah. And so I began to understand then about Prabhupada. And then you find other supporting verses, you know, like that. So we go through verse by verse in the thing with our, our thoughts on the matter and other people's comments that we get. But then the uh, Upadesha Amrita has appendices, right, in the back. There's a, a biography of Srila Prabhupada. So we, we kind of did the same thing. We included appendices and kind of following the same format. So this is really aimed at Bhakti by Bhava level. How many people here have Bhakti Shastri Diploma? Okay. How many people here have Bhakti by Bhava Diploma? Okay. How many people here have Bhakti Vedanta Diploma? Oh. <laughs> so we're working with Atul Krishna and everybody else. To, to try and remedy that situation quickly. You know, yeah. At Bhakti Shastri, you should be able to defend yourself against philosophical deviations. Bhakti by Baba, you should be able to defend other people from philosophical deviations. Bhakti Vedanta, you should be able to go out and defeat philosophical dis, uh, what's that, deviations. And when you become Bhakti Sarvabhoma, you should be able to start your own philosophical deviation. God. <laughs> Yes, yes, okay. So, different diplomas, yes, yes. So this is aimed at really Bhakti Bhai Baba level. You know, studying Upadesha Amrita, which, which Prabhupada says the second time. But now the questions, the comments, the levels. So we figure if you have Bhakti Bhai Baba diploma, you should have read, you know, for Bhakti Shastra, you should have read the, the one volume Lila Amrita. Yeah? Should, how many people here have read Lila Amrita, the one volume? How many people cried when you were reading it? <laughs> you realize, my God, this movement is not something which just fell from the sky. You know, very nice, very important book. Okay, so Bhakti Bhai Baba, you should have read the big thing like that and know, know your guru and stuff. And you should be able to write a biography of Prabhupada just like that. Okay, it's Bhakti Bhai Baba standard, testing people. Then Prabhupada has like a, a list of references in the book. So what we did then, we went through all of the citations in Upadesha Amrita. And some of them are indirect. You know, Lord Chaitanya told Haridas Thakur. Some of them are exact citations. Some of them are obscure. You know? And we found, I think, all of them. <laughs> all the citations. And then we give the references where you can find them, everything else. So it's all here. It's, uh, I want to publish it separately as a little, you know, advice of a verse book to refresh them, memorize them, learn the word by word meaning, study them like that. So something we've done here, you know, looking at all the citations in there, and it's so nice to see like that how Prabhupada is using it. Uh, how many verses do you have to know so there is a 70% chance that you'll know the next verse should have Prabhupada cites? It's like almost how many verses does Srila Prabhupada cite 70% of the time? How many? A thousand? A hundred? Ten? Huh? One thousand? Everybody asks, this is about 50. There's about maybe 50, 60 verses that, you know, you see again and again and again like that. So aren't that many. Yeah, but you should know them well, you know? The same way, how many philosophical, so philosophical concepts are there, basically? Same concept as in Isopanishad, Upadesha Amrita. One should not imitate a Vaishnava on a more elevated platform, you will fall down. You should follow his footsteps. It's, an, it's, it's emphasized in Upadesha Amrita, it's emphasized in Isopanishad. So you see this same concept, you know, again and again. Yeah. So this is understanding Prabhupada, understanding the literature, <clears throat> learning the books. This is what we've, we've done ourselves, how we've approached it. And, you know, so many people are going to approach, you know, reading Prabhupada's books and studying them, taking them advantage in a different way. Everybody's different, you know. Then we also have uh, Anvaya, Anvaya, because the Sanskrit word order is different than the English word order. 
And so Radhika Raman gives a little explanation why it's different. And so Gopi Radha went through and put the, um, in the proper order. And then when you read the word by word translation, the translation is obvious then. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's just that and so on. Then we have the Bhakti Bhai Baba, Bhakti Bhai Baba questions, question bank. If you can answer all those questions, you can pass the Bhakti Bhai Baba test on Upadesha Amrita. I think that's about all. There's some other things, odd things. You can have a birthday party for Upadesha Amrita. Uh, it was dedicated on Vishvarup Mahotsava, which is Prabhupada's sannyas anniversary. Yeah, other things, yeah. So it's, I think it's like, it's like 50, 55 years old or something. So many other things in here. And it's available <laughs> at Amazon.com for, for $10, which is damn cheap. Yeah. Yeah, if you photocopy it, it costs a lot more. Uh, we, get, we get $2 you know, <laughs> from that. Yeah. And then I recommend that you uh, chop it and spiral bind it. You know, then you can use a study guide. It's not a, not a companion, it's a study guide like that. So, so any final questions or comments? Yes, sir. If you just talk loudly, it'll probably be more clear. <laughs> Hare Krishna, what is your good name? Hare Krishna, I'm a And uh, I've given you to study the books and uh, prepare to give a class. Uh, and otherwise, you can just go to the YouTube, you copy something and you just do it. So, how do you know? What is the, is it the okay or should we go back to the old way of studying and giving a class? So it's so easy to just find the YouTube class and just give it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's saying that people sometimes prepare their class by listening to YouTube. And the better we read the book, I think that's what it's commenting. Reading the books instead of listening on YouTube and just yeah, um, getting information. No, it's very important. For example, the diplomas, Bhakti Shastri, Bhakti Bhai Baba. And one, one time Prabhupada said, this is not for everybody. This is not for everybody in ISKCON. This is for pundits, you know? Yeah, somebody else, maybe a cook. He likes Prabhupada's books, but he can cook the Sunday feast. He can cook the Raj Boga offering. He can make all the Mangalartik milk sweets. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, he's learned his, his program. Prabhupada says, said, Nanda Maharaj could not read or write he would hire an educated fool to do it for him. Which brings us right away to software engineers. Yeah, yeah some, some businessman is occupying you, giving you 10% of his profit or something, you know, and making, making five times as much off of you. So he was a Vaisha. He couldn't read or write. He'd have some fool, educated fool, do it for him. Then he says, what to speak of the Garls, <laughs> the Gopis, they were cowherd girls. They were really afraid of the princesses in Dwarka. Because he said, once Krishna's there, oh, he'll just be bewildered by these girls. They're so sophisticated. They can do crossword puzzles. <laughs> they can do crossword puzzles. You know, they were such simple, you know, village girls. Yeah, yeah. He said they couldn't read or write. Some of them apparently could. He said, but they would go to classes and puppet shows and things like that, organized by the Brahmins. And he said, they knew everything about the universe and everything else. So for the, the most people, you know, the process is the, the puppet shows, television, movies, this is all puppet shows. Yeah, yeah. So ordinary, the Brahmins and everybody else, some people, they're into books. But other people, they apply it differently. They put it to work or they, you know, and so on. Yeah, and so yeah, for some people, but, but then usually, yeah, if you're Shudra, you, you talk informally. Even a Kshatriya, he knows the philosophy, but he doesn't preach like that formally. He organizes other people, encourages people. But if you're a Brahmana, then it's your nature to talk and, and read and study. You can't, you have to do it. It's just, you've got to read at least an hour a day, you know, yeah. So yeah, different people, you know, take advantage of different resources, yeah. Like that. So.
So we want to thank everybody for tolerating us and taking us through this difficult service. All glory is to Srila Prabhupada. Shri Vrindavan Damaki Jai. Radha Shama Sundar Gorarati Gijai. Gorabhimani Lord.